dancers, Miglana here from thepowerdancer.com. Welcome to another Pow Flow episode. In the last two videos, we focus on head expression. The next body part we're going to focus on, and that often looks and feels stiff but hides a lot of expression, is your chest. Chest movements can be sensual, sexy, they can also look cool. Many people think that you need a great upper back flexibility for this. Not true. It's more about activating and engaging the right muscles, which might even feel sore after practicing today's exercises. I'll help you find a bigger range of motion in your upper body that you didn't think or you didn't know that you had before. We're going to start with simple chest isolations. We're going to combine them together into a short choreography on the pole. You may ask, why isolations? Ultimately, we want to be able to dance with our entire body and not just with the chest. Well, exactly for this reason. Isolations help you tune into some parts of your body that you're usually forgetting or skipping when you're dancing. They can correct improper movement patterns and help you become more expressive. We're going to start with shoulder isolations. Stand with the back to the pole and with your head and your spine touching the pole. Circle with your shoulders forward for 10 times, but keep your head, chest and hips still. Change directions and circle to the back. If your head and your spine come off the pole, then you're doing it wrong. This is what the incorrect version looks like. Chest lifts. Relax your shoulders down. Imagine a string attached to your chest, opening your rib cage and lifting your chest up. Bring it back to neutral so that your spine touches the pole again and repeat 10 times. Sink it to your breath. Make sure that you're keeping your head and your shoulders still. Take a step in front of the pole, open your feet wide, bend your knees slightly and keep your hands on your hips. Practice the same exercise and explore how far from neutral position you can lift your chest without moving your shoulders. This can be trained. If you practice it for 5 days and make a before and after video, you're going to see a difference. Chest drops. Breathe in and on exhale, close your ribcage and curve your back slightly. Come back to neutral position and repeat 10 times. Now connect the chest lift with the chest drop and loop it smoothly. To turn this into a body wave, let go of the stillness of your head and your shoulders. Let your head lead the movement and the rest follow. Imagine drawing a knee with your torso. Finally, relax your hips and your knees and allow the wave to continue down your body. Imagine that your spine is a long slender scarf that creates a soft velvety movement. Notice the difference between the reverse aka puking body wave where the movement comes from the knees and goes up through the spine and the regular body wave where the movement is initiated by the head and goes down through the hips. On the pole you can make the body waves even bigger. Keep your hands at chest height and play with the sensation of pulling the pole towards your chest and pushing it away. Explore different variations. You can come up on your toes and you can cross your arms in front of your chest. Notice how different the grips affect your movement. The most common mistake with body waves on the pole is keeping the legs bent while pulling the chest forward. This ends up in something like this. Remember to keep your hips out when you pull yourself to the pole. The more you isolate and involve every part of your body, especially the head, the more expressive this move will look. One more isolation which we are going to use in the choreography later are the horizontal chest circles. They consist of a chest lift and a drop that we learned at the beginning and side slides. Open your feet wide, bend your knees slightly and keep your hands on your hips. Slide your chest side to side, but keep your hips still. Imagine wearing a corset that lifts and slides your ribcage side to side. Now connect the four dots. Lift, side, drop, side. You can also think of the four directions. Front, side, back, side. Then turn this into a big smooth circle. Focus on moving through all four directions and not cutting moves short. A common mistake with this move is to either start circling with your shoulders or with your hips. Repeat the same in the other direction. Here's from another angle. 
front, side, back, side, and then the big circle. On the pole you can keep your hands slightly open in a true grip or a cup grip to give your upper body optimal space to move. Instead of keeping everything still which was the goal in the previous exercises, come up on your toes and this time play with involving other parts of your body as well. You can move the circles through different levels, shoulders, chest, hips. There's no right or wrong anymore, you can now create your own move that feels good to you. Now that we've learned these moves, we're going to put them together into a short choreography. Before we do that, a little reminder that you can use my 15 minutes long warm up routine if you are not feeling warm yet. These dynamic flows will also soften your body and help you get confident in dancing. You can get it on thepowerdance.com slash flow warm up. The link is in the description below. We're going to make three steps around the pole, starting with the inside leg. If you want to use the same grip like me, grab high on the pole with your inside hand, slide it down until your elbow is at shoulder height and keep your elbow behind the pole. On the third step, pivot on your inside leg and draw a circle on the floor with the other leg until you face the pole. To make the pivot more expressive, lean out with your upper body and add a head circle. Continue the head movement directly into a body wave and grab the pole with both hands. After the third body wave, pull your chest towards the pole, let go with your hands and grab high on the pole. Use your biceps to pull yourself up and kick quickly with your legs in front of the pole. If you are wearing heels, do heels clack. When you come down, cross one foot in front of the other. Slide down the hand that's the same side with your front foot and prepare your hands for a turn. Turn on both feet until you face the pole again. Grab it with both hands and open one leg to the side. Lean sideways with your upper body and imagine that two swimming rings are floating on each side of the pole and you're pulling your head through. The hips follow. Once you got the second ring, reach with your inside hand high on the pole and slide your inside leg forward. The next move is a variation of a front knee hook and looks like this. The two most important tips to remember are first, create the momentum by pressing your knee into the pole and kick with your foot to your butt. And second, push your hips forward and away from the pole. Don't worry about the legs at the beginning and practice just the momentum. Once you got it, you can start drawing a circle on the floor with your outside leg. And when you feel confident, lift your leg higher in the air. If you have slippery hands though, keep your feet on the floor. A common mistake is hooking the leg too high on the pole and sitting back with the hips. Instead of that, slide down the hook leg during the spin and step on the floor. You should end with your weight on the inside leg. To transition to the next move, continue the same motion. Stick your bum out and draw a big circle with your hips to shift your weight onto the other leg. The next move is a pirouette on one leg using the tray grip. Imagine holding a tray with a jewelry that you'd like to present to everyone in the room. Bring it first across your body and then towards the pole. Use the same hand like your standing leg and grab the pole at face height. Take momentum with the other leg. Lift front to side and close in a passe position. To spin, turn away from the pole. If it's challenging to balance, grab quickly with the second hand. Once you feel confident, use a bigger momentum and continue with one arm. Step back and around the pole with your swinging leg and slide the other leg through to face the pole again. One more time, lean out and reach out with your free arm, take one step to the back and one behind the pole. Continue with four hip winds side to side and then play with the horizontal chest circles from the preparation exercises. Feel free to modify any of these moves and to explore your own free dance. If you want to sing this choreo to the original song of Seth the Lizard, check out the first minute of this video, or use another song of your choice. I hope you guys like this tutorial. Again, you can find my flow warm-up routine on thepowerdancer.com slash flow warm-up. The link is in the description below this video. Let me know in the comments how you're feeling about these type of movements. Do you find it easy or difficult? 
Do you often forget your upper body when you're dancing? Or is it maybe your favorite type of moves? In the next couple of videos, we're going to focus on arms and hands. What to do with your hands when they're off the pole? And how to avoid weird looking movements? Don't miss it. Sign up to my email list on thepoledance.com and follow me on YouTube, Instagram and Facebook.